Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> to most people, a warm May day suggests a drive in the country or a leisurely picnic. But to Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School... It has a far different significance. Yes, indeed. To me, a warm May day means just one thing. Mr. Conklin, our beloved principal, is putting the heat on. (laughs) Some people feel that Mr. Conklin makes his teachers miserable because of his fosterlessness. I don't agree. You can't make so many so miserable so often without giving it plenty of thought. (laughs) Well, but perhaps I'm being too harsh in my judgment. A principal's life can't be all a bed of roses, either. There must be many nights which he spends tossing and turning in his bed until the wee small hours, hoping, planning, thinking, saying to himself, What can I do to them this week? (laughs) Well, during the free period last Friday morning, his nocturnal efforts seemed to have borne fruit. He started an impromptu quiz without prizes. Miss Brooks. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, (laughs) Yes, Mr. Conklin? Conjugate the verb strive, please. Strive? Uh, strive, strove, thriven. Now, thrive. Thrive. Thrive, throve, thriven. Oh, no. <laughs> really, Mr. Conklin, these sudden little tests are quite disconcerting. I don't... Uh, see... Silence, Miss Brooks. We're not finished. Yes, sir. More verbs? Five. Five. Five, fold, thriven. <laughs> Five isn't a verb. Uh, thank you, Miss Brooks. I knew my visit to your room would produce some valuable bit of information. <laughs> now, my main reason for dropping in, however, was to ask you to do me a favor, Miss Brooks. As you know, Sunday is Mother's Day. Yes, I know, Mr. Conklin. Thanks to a special savings plan I started in February, I was able to send my mother a card this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you want me to do for you? I'd like you to take this package home with you and keep it until Sunday morning. It's a little Mother's Day remembrance for Mrs. Conklin, and I don't want her to stumble upon it before time. Wonderful woman, Mrs. Conklin, and she's trained our daughter Harriet to be a duplicate of herself. Really? Yes. Yes, between them, they're the two biggest snoopers in the county. (laughs) That makes it unanimous. Uh, I mean, I'll be happy to keep the passage for you. (laughs) Thank you, Miss Brooks. I hope my daughter Harriet remembers Mother's Day. Lately, she's had her mind on nothing but that moronic manager of the baseball team, Walter Denton. (laughs) Uh, Walter isn't so bad, Mr. Conklin. Of course, he's not a brilliant student. Brilliant? Walter Denton is Madison's gift to (laughs) subnormality. The thing that annoys me most is the way he bounces. He never goes anywhere. He always bounces there. Hiya, Miss Brooks. I just thought I'd bounce in for a minute. <laughs> well, if it isn't the human handball. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. If I'm interrupting anything, I'll just bounce along. No, Walter. Mr. Conklin was about to dribble back to his office. <laughs> that is, you were finished with me, weren't you, Mr. Conklin? Quite. Good morning, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin. Hasta la vista, Mr. Conklin. I learned that in Spanish. It means see you later. Oh. Well... No se lo veo a usted primero. Oh. What does that mean, Miss Brooks? That means not if I see you first. <laughs> now, what can I do for you, Walter? Well, I need some advice, Miss Brooks. And as is my won't when I want advice, I've hired myself to my favorite English teacher. Or for that matter, my favorite any kind of teacher. Are you sure it's only advice you want? Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. It's about a Mother's Day gift. But a very special type of mother, Miss Brooks. That is... Well, I know it's impossible right now, but just for supposition's sake, suppose you woke up one day and found yourself a mother. I have a mother, so she's miles away. <laughs> no, Brooks, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, if you awoke to find that you were a mother, now what would your first question be? What did it weigh, Doc? <laughs> Are you quite certain you wouldn't say, how is my husband? Not me. I might say, who is my husband? (laughs) I'm serious, Miss Brooks. My dad told me that was my mother's first concern after she knew that I was all right. 
You know, she thinks of us constantly and never of herself. But me, what do I do in return? I, I don't get out of bed when she wakes me. I leave my clothes all over the house. Uh, Sunday's Mother's Day, Miss Brooks, and I've got to make it up to her. Well, that's pretty short notice, Walter, but I have a suggestion for you. You have? Yes. Sunday morning, wait till your mother starts to make breakfast. When you're sure she's in the kitchen, close the door quietly behind her. Then? Then gather up all the clothes that you've scattered around the house. Then? Then put them in a big suitcase. Then? Then run away from home. <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing you, Walter. There's only one way you can make your mother happy, and that's by turning over a new leaf. Well, I'll try, Miss Brooks, but meanwhile, that's just supposing again. Oh, what kind of a present would you like if you were a mother? Oh, I wouldn't care much about presents, Walter. I'd just be happy if I had all my beloved children around me. Gee. Well, of course, my mother only has this one beloved child. Me. Well, it is a lovely sentiment. However, I'd still like to figure out a little gift of some sort. Now, what would make a young mother like yourself happy? A young father like Mr. Boynton. <laughs> it always reminds me, Walter, it's time for me to get down to his laboratory and pick him up for lunch. Oh, did he invite you for lunch today? Of course he did, about ten minutes from now. <laughs> Tell me, Walter, were you able to find out what kind of a gift she'd like? I couldn't find out a thing, Harriet. But we've got to get her something. What's the good of naming Miss Brooks our mother away from mother if we can't surprise her with something she wants? Gee, I'm sorry, Harriet, but all she'd say was that she'd be happy with all her beloved children around her. Uh, she was kidding, of course. I hope. <laughs> kidding? She wasn't kidding. She met us. Oh. Now, let's see. We'll organize a committee to pick out a gift and give it to Miss Brooks. Great, Harriet. Then tonight will officially become Mother Away from Mother's Day night. Well, now that we're finished with lunch, Miss Brooks, I, I've got a surprise for you. Surprise? What is it, Mr. Barnum? I uh, guess. You're picking up both checks. No. <laughs> I'm picking up both checks. No. Then I give up. Uh, Miss Brooks, I want you to meet my folks. Why, Mr. Boynton, you've only known me for five years. This is so sudden. <laughs> I just found out they were coming to town myself. You see, they usually spend Mother's Day with my married brother, but Mom decided that this year it's my turn. To do what? Oh, your turn to spend Mother's Day. <laughs> That's right. You, you'll love my mother, Miss Brooks. She used to be a school teacher too, you know. As a matter of fact, she worked herself up until she was a principal. You got to get pretty worked up to be a principal. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. And you'll be crazy about my dad. Oh, what a sense of humor he's got. He's the one who told me the joke about the quiz master who called out, I've got a lady, doctor, but before he could ask her any questions, she stuck a thermometer in his mouth and took his pulse. Isn't that a scream? <laughs> Your father sounds like more fun than a barrel of nothing. <laughs> May I ask you a rather personal question about your folks? Oh, certainly, Miss Brooks. What is it? How long did they go around together before they were married? Nine years. I see. <laughs> folks believed in long engagements in those days, I guess. Hmm? Oh, they weren't engaged until six weeks before the wedding. Six weeks? Mm-hmm. Once Dad makes up his mind about something, he's greased lightly. <laughs> he could have used a little greasing in the first eight years. <laughs> I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing them, Mr. Boynton. When are they arriving in town? Oh, this afternoon, Miss Brooks. I'll have to check them into a hotel for the weekend. I've just got a small bachelor apartment. Yes, I know. You've told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your folks would like to drop over to my place tonight. I'm sure my landlady, Mrs. Davis, wouldn't mind my dusting the living room a little. Oh, that's just fine with me, Miss Brooks. That'll give my folks a chance to rest up from their trip and have some dinner before they... Well, before they meet the girl about whom I... Well, they've heard so much. Why, Mr. Boynton, you mean you actually wrote to your folks about me? And how, Miss Brooks? I've written them many times about how gay and youthful and exuberant you are. I am? You, I mean, you have? Darn <laughs> right. I remember in one of my most recent letters to them, I, I said you were more like a pupil than a teacher. In fact, I think that was a letter in which I described you as a great, big, overgrown kid. <laughs> Maybe I'd better take something. 
You should have seen the answer I got from Dad. He said, whatever you do, son, don't rob the cradle. <laughs> Leave it to Dad. <laughs> oh, he was jesting, of course. He, he loves youngsters. Mr. Boyne, you've given me an idea. Well, what kind of an idea, Miss Brooks? If your father turns me down when I ask him for your hand, maybe he'll adopt me. <laughs> Miss Brooks. Sorry, Eve Arden. We'll continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palmolive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palmolive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure. New charm. So, ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advise for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palmolive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big, bath size Palmolive in tub or shower. <laughs> home right after school and put Mr. Conklin's gift to his wife on my dresser. Then I started to make myself and the house as presentable as possible before Mr. Boynton's parents came over that evening. First of all, I shampooed my hair and set it in pin curls. Then I put on an old, oversized house dress, which I'd borrowed from Mrs. Davis. This intriguing combination achieved the happy effect of making me look like a pat rack drowning in a Quonset hut. <laughs> then I went into the living room to get things in order. When I got there, Mrs. Davis had just finished vacuuming. Oh, uh, Connie, will you pull the plug out for me? My back's been bothering me lately. Oh, certainly, Mrs. Davis. There. Say, hey, this vacuum cleaner's pretty old, isn't it? Yes, indeed. But it's held up remarkably well. I bought it in 1932. 1932? Yes. This Hoover came in when the other one went out. <laughs> well, just so the place looks nice and neat for tonight. You know... I've never met Mr. Boynton's parents before. I know you haven't, Connie. And first impressions are so important. Mm -hmm. That's why I sent our sofa and all the chairs out to be recovered. What? <laughs> Every chair in the house is at the upholsterer's, Connie. But don't worry. Stretch Snodgrass took them down for me, and he promised to bring them back by 6 o'clock. Stretch Snodgrass? Look, Mrs. Davis, Stretch may be a fine athlete, but when it comes to mentality, he's strictly a third strike. Why, he's liable to forget where he took the chairs. Oh, I don't think so, Connie. You know how absent-minded I am. And even I couldn't forget the name of this upholsterer. Why not? Because he has a very odd name. What is it? What is what? <laughs> the name. Who's the name? The upholsterer. Upholsterer? Yes. Look, Mrs. Davis, the sofa and all our chairs are being recovered today. Well, they can certainly use it. <laughs> Where did you send them, Connie? <laughs> Fellow with a very odd name. I never can remember it. I'm sure it'll come back to you later. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get out in back and look for our cat. Minerva? Is she missing again? Mm-hmm. She had a date this morning. A date? Yes, I heard her making it last night. <laughs> But she should be back by now. She knows how I worry about her. Well, you let me know if she comes in the front way, Connie. And I'll take a look back here. All right, Mrs. Davis. That's funny. Minerva never bothered to ring before. <laughs> how do you do, my dear? How do you do? I'm Philip's mother. Philip? Yes, Philip Boynton. I'm Mrs. Boynton. But that's impossible. You won't be here till tonight. Oh, well, I mean, come in, Mrs. Boynton. 
You don't have to tell me who you are, my dear. Philip has written so much about you. He has? Yes, he says Miss Brooks wouldn't know what to do without you, Mrs. Davis.